First chapter, verse 20 and 21. For all the promises of God in Him, in Christ, are yes and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us, through us. All the blessings, all the promises of God is yes and amen. You sit with a yes from heaven. You have an amen. You know, amen means let it be so. Let it be so. So the first point I want to say, you are blessed in Christ. You are the blessed in Christ. Yes, the Chesiendes and the Yere. You are the blessed ones in Christ. So you can write there, blessed ones in Christ, 1 Corinthians 1, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20 and 21. Let it be so, my brother, my sister, that you understand God's definition of blessing. He wants to bless you. And you have a yes, as long as you are in Christ and stay in Christ and do as Christ would ask you to do. Understand the blessings, all the blessings from heaven is there for you. God has a yes over his child. And an amen. Let it be so. Let them be blessed. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Second one. 2 Corinthians. One, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Amplified talks about, like we said many times in the church, trophies of his victory. So you can write there 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14a. Trophies in Christ. Trophies of his victory. Trophies in Christ. Trophies of his victory. Amen. Now remember the trophy does not speak from itself. When you see a, a trophy, you always ask who did what? Who did what? So if you're a trophy of his victory, it's like you're bragging about what Christ has done. Doesn't matter. He's telling these guys, doesn't matter your success, doesn't matter all the things in a very positive way or in a negative way. Remember. God has put you in a place to brag about His Son. He has put you in a place to brag about His Son and the perfect, perfect, awesome work that His Son has done on earth. Trophies of His victory. So even, even when I fell in things that were not right, through God's forgiveness, I'm bragging about the God that can forgive. Hello? I'm bragging about the God. There's always, always in every situation opportunity to brag about who He is. Trophies of His victory. God trusts that you will not be a horrific piece of whatever as a trophy. No. Trophy is, is being had to be seen. It must be placed in a specific a specific place for a specific time. And that trophy cannot run away there or decide on itself where he wants to stand. But a trophy is open that somebody can take it and put it in a place where that person wants that trophy to be seen. God put you in a specific place where he wants you to display, display God's glory. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14b. Okay, you with me? Through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. You are a fragrance. Verse 15. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ. So, number three. Yes, you are blessed in Christ. You are trophies of his victory, but you are also the flavor, fragrance fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to the one we are and the aroma of death we call that a stench don't know if you have a dead ever had a dead rat a rat a rotten rat it's quite an interesting aroma anybody experience that so to many guys out there in the world and to guys that don't want to change. When they know you would want to speak into their lives. 
and they know they are not walking accurately. Many times when they're not open, you're like the stench in their lives. But then you mustn't take it personal. God had to train me, teach me <laughs> in that. When I don't think I always have that victory yet. But not to take it personal. When people react to you in a way that, yeah, it's not lacquer. It's not nice. But to the other those who are teachable also, the aroma of life leading to life. Life leading to life. So the aroma that's coming from your, from your life must bring life to others. They must experience life. But that stench of death, it will be there. It can be there. But my question is, it is the aroma of His knowledge it says the fragrance of his knowledge in every place let's say fragrance of his knowledge in every place you guys doing the course there Marceta guys you better be that the fragrance of his knowledge in every place there where you go amen wherever you go there's an atmosphere that's coming with you there's a aura going with you and may it be really a freshness because of God's word that is alive in you alive in you amen okay number four two Corinthians three verse two and three you are our epistle a letter written in our hearts known and read by all men clearly you are an epistle a letter of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart let's say i'm a letter of christ may it be my brother my sister that people will be able to read your life read you like a book hello and what they will read will be accurate but it will all depends if you are open hearts on tablets of flesh that is of the heart a heart that is flexible a heart that is teachable a heart that is soft on that heart the holy spirit can be the ink he can be the ink but on tablets of stone when i have first the issue when i have first this thing with people the whole time then I have this thing because that guy didn't do this and this guy didn't do that. Yeah, I will give the enemy the authority to write on that tablet of stone. Whatever rubbish he wants to write. But he will write. Somebody will write something on your heart. There will not be a time when nobody is writing something on your heart. Something will always be written on that tablet. You decide if it's a tablet of stone. Or a tablet of flesh of a heart that is soft and teachable and humble. You can make that decision. What type of heart it will be. Are you with me? Let it be so. May God help us. In Jesus name. Next one. Number five. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. But we are this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Earthly vessels. Erde kreike. Give me a different word for earthly vessels. It's not erde kreiks. So what's the erde kreik? Clay pots. Okay. A clay pot. You are this pot. Earthly vessel. But inside there's a treasure. So you can say earthly vessel with treasure that's who you are you're an earthly vessel with a treasure and this earthly vessel vessel it can be broken can be cracked but make sure that the treasure from heaven that you make it seen that you may make sure that it's seen out there that the excellence of the power may be of god so god's excellence must be seen this treasure is there for God's excellence to be seen. And you're just an earthly vessel. 
so that the focus can be on the treasure. So that the focus can be on the excellence of the treasure. Are you with me? Hallelujah. That's number five. Number six, 2 Corinthians 5, is 1 to 4. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. Okay, you can write there. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 4. I'm a tent. Everybody say, I'm a tent. Okay. That means you will not be there forever. Not at all. This earthly house, this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house not made with hands. It's the home of God. A father's home. Eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly. Desiring to be clothed with our habitation. Which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed. We shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent. Groan. Being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed with mortality, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. What are we saying? If you can focus on the fact that, yes, you are having, you're living in a tent, it's temporarily. But over you must come down the home of God, the house of God. Let your focus be the house of God. What is the life that you are building? What is the life that you are building? Don't try to build with bricks and stone. That what is a tent. Uh -uh. Understand even the desires of your flesh. How we clothe. How, what we do. Yes, it must be presentable. But still at the end of the day, let Christ be the focus. Because what you see is only a tent. Tell your neighbor, you're living in a tent. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, once again, in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are some other creation. You were created. What a creation. Okay, may you understand that you are a new creation. Here's a capsule. Mara Niva capsule. Hallelujah. May I understand the new that God has placed in me. The new means there's a freshness in you. That what is new is fresh. Hello? There's a permanent freshness in you because you're a new creation. And you're not just today new. The day when you die, you're still the new creation. You're still fresh from your spirit. The old things have passed away. What does it mean? You are perfect. Where? In your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. Your soul has some issues still. It must fall in line. Your body is the tent. Soul must deal with the issues. Spirit is perfect. You with me? Paul wants these guys to come to understand who they really are with Christ, in Christ, because of Christ. Amen? Please go and study this and come to a realization and have a revelation of who you are. Let it be so in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ as though God were pleading through us. As though God were pleading through us. Are you with me? Ambassadors of Christ. If you're an ambassador of a certain country. You're an ambassador of Japan. You're representing what Japan is standing for. John 17. Jesus prays. He's praying. And he says, they are in this world, but they are not from this world. You are not from this world. So remember when people ask you, from where are you? Oh, I'm from heaven. But I'm living in Bloemfontein. Use it as an opportunity to testify. Maybe just speak the truth. You are not from Bloemfontein. <laughs> That's what the word says. You are from God. You are from heaven. You're from the kingdom of God. Okay, maybe they're going to think that you are freaky. But... 
That's the truth. You are from heaven, but you're living in Bloemfontein with a mandate because you're an ambassador. You're an ambassador of a different kingdom. But you know, you cannot be an ambassador of a kingdom if you don't understand the kingdom. But God trusts you. God believes in you so much that He believes that you will represent Him accurately. He believes that you will pre represent Him accurately wherever you go. In a place where His kingdom is not yet established. An ambassador of Japan is in a place where it is not called Japan. Uh, you with me? Otherwise, he's not an ambassador. What is he doing in Japan? Then he's not an ambassador of Japan if he's living in Japan. He's, he's in a different place representing Japan. So wherever God will send you, he will send you among people where his kingdom is not yet established, where you represent as an ambassador his kingdom to show forth who he is. He's saying that God truly, truly, truly believes in you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Then 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1. That's point number 9. It talks about we are co-workers with Christ. Verse 1. We are co-workers with Christ. You've written already. Hallelujah. So what are we saying? Co-workers with Christ. We all know that God has good works that He has prepared for us to do. But you know, He's organizing. And if you are truly knowing what is the good works that God has prepared for you to do, He will ask of you things that you cannot do on your own. He will ask your thing of you things that you will mess up unless you allow Him to do it with, with you. Because he does not want you to do anything on your own. The guy in the world, he can have a certain level of success, but he's never with Christ. But for you, the good works God has prepared for you, it's always to be done with him. So he wants you to do something. He knows you will not be able to do it without him. And he's waiting for you to call out to him. He's waiting for you to invite him to come alongside and say, God, what do you want to do today? God, what is your agenda this week with me? There where I study. There where I learn a lot of things. Where, there where I will have meetings. What is your agenda with me, Lord? What are you going to do because I want to do it with you? In other people's lives. Amen. Let's go with that, man. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16. And... What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So you are the temple of the living God. The temple of the living God. I thought you were only the tent. And then later... The house of God will come. Yes. As he's saying you are the tent so that you will remember it's only temporarily. But why are you the temple? Because Holy Spirit is living in you with an agenda. You are the temple with an agenda. Holy Spirit is living in you to fulfill an agenda. And at, the, at a certain moment, at a certain time, you will not be the temple of the Holy Spirit alone. You will become the home of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But how? As a living stone. So if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and you go with the agenda of the one living in you with the Holy Spirit, then you are the living stone that will be put, placed, engraved, no, built into the home of God, the house of God. Amen. Amen. Go with Holy Spirit agenda as the temple of the Holy Spirit. When he says you are the temple, you are the temple of the one that has an agenda from the Father. The promise of the Father that was sent was the Holy Spirit when Jesus went back. It is for your benefit that I will go, Jesus said, so that the Father can send the promise, the Holy Spirit. And he is here with agenda 
until Jesus will come. Amen. You with me? Number 11. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 6 and 10. Talking about the one that walk in a humility that there will be true repentance. So, you can write there, I am the humble with true or genuine repentance. Right there, I am the humble. You are the humble walking with true repentance. True repentance, not because, hey, I was in trouble, so I need to turn around. I mustn't be in trouble. Yeah, you mustn't be in trouble. You must be in Christ. Hello? Are you with me? So may God help you that you are truly the humble. The humble is open, teachable. The humble is open and teachable. That's the children's church. Hallelujah. Be, be those ones. Number 12. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. Talking about you know the grace of God. You know the grace of God. Now give me a good translation for kenners van genade. The kenners van genade. You know His grace. You are experts. Okay. Experts of His grace. You are people, a people knowing His grace. You can write the otherwise in that way. A people knowing God's grace. You know His grace. What is His grace? It's His ability that He has given you. His enablement. So you are a people knowing God's abilities in you. You, knowing the, you know the ability of God. You know the ability of God. That is still Paul imparting destiny through Showing them that identity. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. You know the grace of God. Number 13. 2 Corinthians 9. There's 13 chapters. Okay. 2 Corinthians 9. Verse 6 and 7. But this I say. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. For So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Who are you, cheerful givers? You are cheerful givers. Why? God loves a cheerful giver. Why? Because he is a cheerful, cheerful giver. He does it with joy. We have Hebrews 12 verse 2. It says, For the joy set before him, he went to the cross. He sowed, he gave his everything with joy. With joy. God loves the one that has the same heart also as him. He loves to give with joy. And his hope, his faith, his dream is that you will have the same heart as his son, as his daughter. That you will have the heart of your father. And that is with joy you will give your life. With joy you will give financially. With joy you will give from that what you have. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Number 14, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians 10. The wind must just work with me, not against me. 2 Corinthians 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. Christ. It was an armed robbery. Anybody know that st stuff like that? When there's a robbery, okay, that's one thing. When it was an armed robbery, it was dangerous. Uh, you with me? You can just write there, I'm armed. I'm armed. Yes, gewapen. So where you go, you are dangerous for the enemy. 
You are dangerous for the enemy. You can write there, I'm armed and dangerous. I'm serious. That's actually what the enemy knows. But what a joke. If somebody is armed and he does not know that he's really armed, he does not know and understand his weapon. He does not know how to use the weapon even. Donkey. He does not even know how to use the weapon. If at least you had no weapons, then it's okay. But you're a joke. If you have all the weapons to win the war, to always stand in victory, but you, you're not willing to be trained with the most excellent weapons that you have. Even in the season we saw in Israel, hey? A lot of things happening, but the guys had and still have, uh, yeah, they have this modern technology just to intercept all those thousands of bombs being fired down on them. May it be in our lives. doesn't matter the amount. We will just know how to intercept. But then also how to be not just on defense, but that we will come in the place of shaking, shaking the nations, changing earth through the Holy Spirit, changing earth through the weapons being given to you. It's a shame if you don't use it. It's not bringing honor to God who gave you the weapons. When you use the weapons, it's showing how excellent God is. Are you with me? May God's excellence be seen, His victory be seen, because you know how to use the weapons. You are armed. Say, I am armed and dangerous. The problem is we can be dangerous with other we weapons in our hand where we can break down, walk in bitterness, walk with the temptations, walk with the inferiority and we need to break down other people and focus on, on the me and the me and the me. Ah, God's going to set us free in Jesus' name. Okay, then 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy for I have betrothed betrothed you betrothed you with you to one husband that I may present you as a holy virgin to Christ you can write there I'm a virgin presented to Christ I am a virgin presented to Christ Paul says I've presented you to one man that is Christ. When you take the word of God, my brother, my sister, when you, when you allow the word of God to transform you, you are presented as a virgin to Christ. You are presented for intimacy with Christ. But if you believe all the other rubbish, you will have intimacy with rejection. You will have intimacy with bitterness. You will have intimacy because that will be the man that you will have intimacy with. Bitterness, rejection. All these issues, judgment, whatever. But you will be presented to someone that you will have intimacy with. Let it be Jesus Christ. Allow the word of God in such a way in you that you will be presented to one, and that is Christ. But my brother, my sister, you also, you're supposed to present Christ as the man to others around you. But if you don't know him, how can you present him? How can you introduce people to Christ if you don't really know Him? God will help us. I believe you believe. Amen? 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. We're going for the landing. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. And He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. You can write there, I'm weak with His ability. I am weak with His ability. It says, in weakness, His strength will be seen. It says, my grace is, is enough for you. But what is His grace? His enablement, His ability. God's grace is His ability being given to you. The first point of those 
that grace was he gave you the ability to become a child of God. That is why amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing ability that God has given me that I can become his child. So if God says, my grace is sufficient for you, God is saying, my ability is enough. But if you don't understand your weakness, if you don't understand that you truly need me, you're not going to walk in my grace. You're not going to walk in my ability, God says. Because you don't come with humility. You don't come with honesty. You don't come from this place of, I need God. Without Him, I ca I'm just weak. Hello? And even as you walk with Christ, there's so many areas that we see weaknesses in our lives. Hello? But God still he has the faith that you will live from the strength and the ability that He will give you. Are you with me? Let's say, I'm weak. But I have God's ability. It's more than enough. Then we end off with 2 Corinthians 13, verse 13. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you forever. So Paul ends it all. What is it saying? You are, I'm the beloved of God. Let's say I'm loved. I have God's ability. I have a relationship with him. And Paul blesses them with that and say, may you be blessed. May you be blessed with this relationship with God, this ability that he gives you. And that you will always know his energy, his passion, his motivation is with you because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you.